Hey, welcome everyone. We are so glad that you are here or joining us online. My name is Matt. I'm the director here and I am glad that we get to do another Wednesday night together or online. Uh, and also it's a good week to be a CU fan. I mean, come on, we beat UCLA yet again. If you're not a CU fan, uh, we'll pray for you. All right, that's how it goes. But tonight, um, Ash has a good word that she's gonna bring later. We got some fun games for you guys. Um, so stick around, we're excited to be with you. And with that, welcome. Buenas noches todos. Bienvenidos a la iglesia at Grace Commons. What's up, everybody? Hope you're enjoying yourselves tonight uh, as we are in the thick of the holiday season now. Um, but we got an awesome game for you guys tonight uh, provided to us by a student. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. We are basically doing a trivia, but with riddles. Um, since we've gotten a lot of feedback that you guys enjoy the riddles. So basically, we're going to have five riddles um, uh, pop up. You guys will have about 30 seconds roughly just going to play the Jeopardy music when I put the riddle up on the screen and when the Jeopardy music is over uh, your leader will have the answer to the riddles and they'll be able to determine who's right. If the person in your group uh, gets it before the time is over then that's it. You can call it. If you're watching online then uh, just wait to hear what the answer is. So we are going to start here with our first riddle, numero uno. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Riddle number one, Thanksgiving theme. What has feathers and a beak, but it is dressed? We're back. You know my favorite word. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. What has feathers in a beak, but it is dressed? The answer is a Thanksgiving turkey. Oh, big brain moment right there. But on to the next riddle. Here we go. Uh, this one is a personal fave of mine. Um, let me find it here. Gonna put, even put the, man, I need the Jeopardy music for myself. Uh, here we go, riddle number two. Uh, where do turkeys go to dance? Where do, where do turkeys go to dance? back everyone. What it took is go to dance. I like turtles. Uh, the answer is the butterball. Turkeys go to dance at the butterball. All right. Um, yeah, like I said, you guys just got to be pumping those, the big brain muscles. Um, shout out to Lil Dicky and Brain. Uh, very random. So next riddle, number three. When does Christmas come before Thanksgiving? Ya acabó el tiempo, regresamos aquí. Time's up, we're back. When does Christmas come before Thanksgiving? In the dictionary. <laughs> man, I'm just telling you, these, man, you like these riddles? I think they're, they're pretty good. All right, well, we're on to the fourth riddle. Two more, big brain muscles. Here we go. Uh, number four riddle. I can be smashed, baked, carved, and you can see me everywhere on Thanksgiving. What am I?
hope you're able to get that one. Um, it's a really hard one. The answer is a pumpkin. Ha! Oh, calabaza, pumpkin. What do you know? Uh, yeah. Anyway, on to the last riddle, guys. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the game so far, um, challenging everyone else in your small group. Uh, but here we go. I'm just scrolling to find a random one here. I like this one. Last riddle. Here we go. Why can't you take a turkey to church? It's not because of COVID. Time's up. Over. Last riddle, done. Game. Game, set, match. The answer is, why can't you take a turkey to church? Because of their foul language. <laughs> Man, I am gonna show myself the door after that one. Uh, get ready for some announcements from Matt and a talk from Ash, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the game. Peace out. Slalom, baby, slalom. Uh, this week's weekly announcement uh, brought to you by uh, Sid the Sloth. <laughs> What's up, my mammals? Fun facts, Ice Age was uh, released in 2002. So, um, classic, classic, that's all I have to say. Um, weekly announcements for you all. Um, one, Veterans Day. So if you know someone or your family, someone in your family is serving or has served, um, we're really thankful for uh, their service, their time, um, all of that. So um, thank a veteran. If you know a veteran, it's a, a really special day. And uh, on a more serious note, actually not really, National Sunday Day. So, uh, you know, we're working on Dairy Queen sponsoring tonight, but we're just gonna say they're our sponsor. Go get a Sunday. It's a fun day to be alive. And then with that, uh, I mean, I think really all the announcements we have, we have two things for you guys. We'll see you next week here. Gates open at seven. And then during Thanksgiving break, we won't have anything. We'll be off enjoying Thanksgiving week with our families, friends, uh, enjoying a week off. So those are our announcements. Glad you guys are here. Enjoy Ash's talk. Well, hey everybody, welcome to the second week of Can't Steal My Joy. Uh, Ash here, excited to bring just a thought for you. Hopefully it'll be fast, quick, uh, and life-changing, or as my friend Quentin Calico says, um, lit. I don't know, I don't know what he says. Anyways, um, how many of you guys have had a moment where your parents say some version or combination of these words? Your attitude sucks right now. Or maybe they say something like, hey, that attitude doesn't fly in this house. Or you really need to shape up your attitude. I used to hate when my parents would say that to me. Like, it's totally like eye roll, cringy, like not a fan of it at all. But for some odd reason, our parents are notorious for saying things about our attitude. And so I'm curious, why would our parents or why do we care so much about our attitude and how it affects or impacts those around us? And I think it's just that, is that our attitude impacts our family. Our attitude impacts our friends. Our attitude impacts our teachers. Like our attitude 100% sort of rules the roost of our life. If we have a great attitude, then the people around us sort of vibe off of that. If we have a crappy one, then the people in our life often don't really want to spend very much time with us. And so tonight, I want to continue on in this series that we've been calling Can't Steal Our Joy, where we're going to look at our attitudes. Last week, Matt kicked us off by looking at Philippians 1 and some verses where Paul, who was kind of like a guy who followed Jesus, was in prison writing to this church. And he was imploring them, encouraging them of like, no matter the circumstances of your life, you can find joy in them. And today I want us to look at joy from the perspective of no matter what's going on in and around us, our attitude is either the gateway to joy or it kills it in its tracks. And so I'm going to read a quick verse for us 
from Philippians 2. It's in the very beginning. If you have a Bible or you want to look at it on your phone, I think Alan's just going to throw it on the screen for us. But if you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor, agree with each other, love each other, be deep spirited friends. Don't push your way up to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way that Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of the status no matter what. Not at all. This is one of those verses that back in the day, we used to have what was called instant messaging. And in your instant messaging, you would have a profile and you would often put like quotes in your profile. This is all news to you. It's like maybe you're like, words in your Instagram of what describes you, but this would be one of those things that I might drop into my AIM profile of like, yeah, that's what I want to be about. But if I'm really honest with you, this is like one of those things that I tell people they should do, but I myself am not very good at it. Or I say, I really like it when the people in my life in and around me act like this, but I myself often have a hard time doing it. Um, and so I think that's because of a couple of things. One, I think it means that if I'm going to live this way, the way of like following Jesus to the point where if I care at all, if I've gotten anything from coming to club or I've gotten anything from coming to church, if I've gotten anything from the community here at club, if I've gotten anything, then I should start counting other people more important than me. But that's challenging and difficult to do. And I think it's because this, it says, if I care, if I have a heart, then I have to put other people before me. It means that I have to be about building deep friendships and hard conversations and letting myself be known or being honest. And all of that is super scary, right? Like living in that kind of community in life seems great, but often it means that people have to see us, recognize us, know us, and that can be a little overwhelming. I think the second reason why this is so hard is it means that we have to be humble, which is not a word in our vocabulary in 2020. Like we don't like being humble. We like to talk about being humble, but we don't like being humble. Um, it means that I have to let go of my attitude and trade it for an attitude like Christ's. Um, one time when I was in college, somebody sent me this verse. So there's a part of this verse that I said, think of yourselves the way that Christ Jesus thought of himself. Another way that they say that in scripture is have an attitude like that of Christ Jesus. And when I was in college, somebody sent me that verse and immediately I was like, oh my gosh, that must mean that my attitude sucks or they're calling me out or I need to change how I'm showing up. But really what they were doing was trying to encourage me and telling me I was doing a great job. But the reality is I know a lot of the time my attitude isn't anything like Christ's. Like I am not laying my life down for the people around me so that they can have this glorious life. Like nobody does that. And if you do that, I think you're rare. And I think that's one of the great parts about coming to club is you start to see people who lay their life down so that you can be included or you can be seen or you are invited and welcome here. And that's hopefully the community we're building here. But that means that we have to do it, which some of us are really great at and some of us suck at. But this whole like having an attitude like that of Jesus is a great idea but similar to last week and when Matt got really practical with us, I want to talk about how do we actually do that? How do we actually have an attitude like Christ who, by the way, had the attitude of like, I will lay my life completely down for you and me so that we can have life with God. And so what that means is he died. He said, you know what? I will die so that you can live, Ash. And I don't know about you, but that's kind of a hard attitude to take. But how do we do it? I think first and foremost, we can care because someone cares about us. So we can care because someone cares about us. What I want you to know is God cares about you 
in that he laid his life down for you so that we could follow him. Think about it like this. It's a lot easier to watch someone build a house than trying to figure out how to build the house, right? If you have never done any construction in your life, but someone was like, hey, come follow me and watch me as I do it, and let me show you and set an example for you, then you know how to do it, right? And so similarly, Jesus goes, you can care and you can have an attitude like me because I laid out an example for you. I showed you how to lay your life down so that other people can thrive. And so I think we can do this by one, watching and following in the footsteps of Jesus. So where he put other people above himself, we too can put other people above ourselves. And I think we can care by doing just that. I believe we can find more joy in our life when we actually love the people around us. Like it's the best thing ever when you get to like love someone or do something for someone that makes their day, right? Like whether you bring them a cup of coffee or you invite them to lunch or you text them that you're thinking of them. Like, I don't know what it is for you that makes you go, wow, I feel really seen, known and loved. But what I want you to see is like, we can be people who have an attitude like Christ if we actually do it. Like we care about people and we lay down ourselves and our life for the betterment of someone else's. So we say, you know what? I don't actually need to go first, but you can go first. I don't actually need to be seen or the most important person in the room. You can be the most important person in the room. And that leads me to my last and final point. We have to be humble, which, you know, a a slice of humble pie around Thanksgiving could probably be good for all of us. But What that really means is we can't be people who kill, steal, destroy, lie, cheat, manipulate to get ahead or get first to get people to like you or see you. Like you have to be okay being who you are. You have to be okay just living the life that God has given you, but also just who he made you to be. And you don't need to lie about it. You don't need to cheat. You don't need to manipulate people into liking you, but just being okay with who you are. Um, Because I think when we do end up lying or cheating or manipulating people to like us or see us or make ourselves important, I think we have to own it. Like that's the big step in this of being humble is we have to own when we don't have an attitude like that of Jesus. Like when my mom would look at me and say, hey, Ash, your attitude doesn't fly here. Instead of being like, let me roll my eyes as far back into the back of my head as I can. I needed to look at her and go, you know what? You're right. I'm not acting like the person that I should be or that I am you have called me into a place of being like, yeah, you're right. And I can own that. So when people maybe say something to you of like, hey, you're not really acting like the person that I know that you are, or you just recognize that in yourself, instead of just pretending like it's not a thing, I would invite you to own it, to apologize, to be people who go, hey, I'm sorry. Like those words should fly out of our mouth, kind of like water in a river. Um, In addition to owning it, That means we also have to change our behavior. You have to stop being a person who lies, cheats, manipulates, like hurts other people to get what you want and to get ahead. And instead, lay down your life so that other people can start to thrive around you. And laying down your life is kind of like a Christian term that if you're anything like me when I was in high school, I wouldn't have known what that meant. What that really means is like you count other people and their well-being ahead of yours. Like I think about it um, often when we go on a mission trip around here, or if we ever have food around here, often you'll hear like a Matt or Alan say, Hey dudes, you go second. And the ladies go first one. That's just like being etiquette. Like that's just etiquette. Like women, you know, we deserve to eat first and two, you eat all the food. But all that to say is I think the invitation to us is that, um, we put other people above ourselves that we go it's not important for us to be the most important person in the room but we want to make other people feel like they are the most important person in the room and we can do that when we are humble we can do that when we believe that as we are we are enough like we don't need to get ahead because who we are and who god has made us to be and who the people in our life say that we are is flat out enough um and so we can kind of forfeit that first place or striving or whatever it is that we do to be seen. So to end, I want you to know these three things. One, we care about you here at club. Like we care about you. And then two, God cares about you. Like he cares a lot about you to the point where he laid his life down so that you could live and have full life. 
And then lastly, I think most importantly, you care because these people, we and God care about you. So you care, you care about others more than you care about yourself. You care by being humble. You care by remembering that God cares about you. So there's a lot in there to just sort of unpack, but I hope you guys have a great small group and we will see you next week. We are so glad you came. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye. Bye bye. Remember, please discard all candy wrappers and popcorn containers in the nearest trash receptacle. Thank you. Okay, bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Are they all gone? Uh, is, is there is everybody gone? <laughs> huh? Good. Oh my gosh, my cheeks are killing me. I can't keep smiling like this anymore. I am exhausted. I think I need a break. 